everybody. Vicki Lee here. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe. You know me. I don't bring these like light, fluffy little things to the table when I speak. We go into the deep end, don't we? And we talk about a lot of issues that are really relevant. Maybe there are some things that a lot of people don't speak about. Maybe they do, but we tend to stay in the deep end. So if you listen to my speakings, I really appreciate it. I have always said I'm not here to tickle your ear. I'm here to bring you the truth. I had a friend who sent me an article today. I can't thank her enough. Thank you, Darlene, for sending this to me. So I'm going to speak on it and speak about what is happening in the world and in our country at this time. And this is a warning so that's what I do. Um, this is from cbnnews.com. It says the largest satanic gathering in history, Satan Con, targets another city that didn't allow their invocation. The Satanic Temple, or TST, is advertising its second convention to be held in Boston, Massachusetts this spring as the largest satanic gathering in history. This convention known as Satan Con 2023 will be held April 28th to the 30th and is being promoted as a weekend of blasphemy and remembrance in Boston. The theme of the convention is Hexamacht in Boston or Witches Night, an ancient German holiday that occurs annually on April 30th. Even though tickets are already on sale, the actual location for the event, speakers or vendors has not been announced. According to the event's website, the convention is dedicated to Boston Mayor Michelle Wu for her unconstitutional efforts to keep TST out of Boston's public spaces. Based in Salem, Massachusetts, the group has requested to fly a satanic flag over Boston City Hall after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled last May that the city violated the free speech rights of a conservative activist seeking to fly a Christian flag on a pole outside the downtown building. TST tweeted a copy of their request filled with the city property management department file with the city property management department to raise a flag marking Satanic Appreciation Week scheduled in July. There has been no response from the city on TST's flag request. The city has said it stopped flying flags in 2021. TST also sued Boston City Council in January of 2021 arguing the council violated the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution and the Free Exercise Clause of the Massachusetts Constitution by not inviting the Satanists to pray before their meetings. In Boston, city council members are allowed to invite any religious leader of their choosing to offer an opening prayer. The city contends that it is perfectly legal for council members to select specific individuals to pray. And in 2021, a U.S. District Court agreed that the city, uh, with the city on that issue. The Satanic Temple is separate from the Church of Satan, which was founded in the 1960s. Founded in 2013, TST says it doesn't believe in Satan, but describes itself as a non-theist religious organization that advocates for secularism. On its website, under the question, do you worship Satan, in the frequently asked questions section, TST answers no, nor do we believe in the existence of Satan or the supernatural. Now, as they say that they don't believe in Satan, um, they are called the Satanic Temple. So the denial of who they are is told in the title of who they are. Um, I have, have had a title for years of the piano and vocal performer. And so I have a website with that. And for years I went and I um, dedicated to myself, myself to that. And people contacted me as that. And I went out and I, I did that. As someone on YouTube, I put down that I am a speaker on YouTube. Now, if I put down that I'm a speaker on YouTube and you come to me and you say, are you a speaker on YouTube? And I say, I'm not a speaker on YouTube. Then something doesn't line up, does it? So to be called the satanic temple and then to say, no, we're not satanic. We don't believe in that. There you go. Right out the gate. The truth of who you are needs to be spoken. And when you back away from that, why are you backing away from that as you want to fly a satanic flag over a city? 
and you're suing because you want to utter a satanic prayer before the meetings and you're suing because you can't do that. But then you say, no, we don't believe in any of this. In life, in anything, with the Bible, the math always adds up. Two and two equals four. Three plus three equals six. Four plus four equals eight. I talk all the time about discernment. Discernment. We need to have the discernment in these end times, in this day and time and age where anything goes to see what we're seeing. We talked within the last two weeks about our culture. And when deviant behavior becomes predatory, that's when God judges it. Go back and look at that. He judged Sodom and Gomorrah because that whole area was just predatory behavior. And so when you ask the questions of demonic forces, and I will call this what it is, I will call them what they say they are, demonic forces, when you ask them, darkness will try to hide. Darkness will want, not want to tell you that it's darkness because you might not be deceived. And so I wanted to bring this to our attention. This is supposed to be the largest gathering in April. How will, how will it uh, um, come about? What will the attendance be? What will happen to that? Perhaps I'll follow up with this and let us know what this is. Joshua said in the Old Testament, to the Israelites as they crossed over into the promised land. If you will keep God's principles everywhere you set, God will give this to you. Your children will be blessed in the land, but you've got to honor God and his precepts. In God we trust is on our money. In uh, God and all of and scriptures and a lot of things are emblazoned in the actual structures that we have in Washington, D.C., and perhaps you live in a locality where it's emblazoned there as well. We are a Judeo-Christian country with Judeo-Christian roots, and we have been mildly blessed because we have done that. I go back to this. I repeat this. I'm like a, um, I, I just repeat myself all the time with this. The seven churches and if you go back, there's another teaching. When I talk about the father and the son and their marital woes, I put that within the last couple of weeks and it goes through the letters to the churches. I go through Christ being the husband, the symbolic husband to the church age. And I go through, go back into that teaching. It's very interesting. And so as you get to the last church, we are there that's neither hot nor cold. And he said, how I wish that you were either hot nor cold because you're just lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And they think they're rich, but they're poor, ragged. And he said, I, I need to give you clothes because it's just decrepit according to what Jesus Christ sees of his bride as the church. This last church that's been in effect for 100 to 140 years. And so with the lukewarm church where the government takes over the role and the church isn't really out in society as it should be, I talk about this all the time, you have the breakdowns and relativism, and I've spoken on that, <laughs> go back to my teaching library, I've covered all these subjects, relativism, re relativism starts to take in because Christians aren't schooled in the Bible. And I say all the time, calvarychurchfl.com. Go to their teaching library, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Learn what the Bible says because we have Christians. I say this all the time. I'm a broken record today. And, and they come out and they say, I'm in God's family. I'm in his family. But they, they do whatever they want. And they're the biggest purveyors of relativism subconsciously. And relativism is you can't tell me what's right. You can't tell me what's wrong. And the Bible tells you what's right. And the Bible tells you what's wrong. The Ten Commandments were designed to tell us what's right and what's wrong. And our laws were based on it. And so as relativism, you can't tell me what's right and what's wrong. As it begins to take hold in the face of a lukewarm church, not marching down the field not taking care of society, 
This is what we're finding. This is what we're finding. The legal challenges. These cities had to go to court and spend taxpayer money because this satanic, they say it in their own title, the satanic cult, an organization, and let's call it a cult. It wants to come in and it wants to say, I want my prayer. I want the satanic prayer. And the courts, thank you, God, are upholding the fact that the city has the right to bring in who they want to open with prayer. They're pushing at the door, aren't they? And they're having this largest reported gathering in April. Let's see what unfolds from this. And this is leaving what Joshua said. Wherever you step, I will give you that you've got to follow God's precepts. And as our country veers away from these precepts and goes into whatever, and you can't tell me what's right, and you can't tell me what's wrong, and we want satanic prayers opening this, and if you don't give it to us, we're going to take you to court and we're going to sue you. And now we're going to go into your city and we're going to have this, what's supposed to be a major event. And I tell, I told us within the last two weeks, no deviancy when you see it. No enough to know predatory culture when you see it. Because this organization is not content to just be an organization. They are pushing at the door, aren't they? They're saying, you may not have invited us in, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, but we're going to push at that door. And we're going to force our way in. And we're going to tell you, you don't have a choice. And I'm here to tell you that if you are hugging onto relativism, like, well, you can't tell them that's wrong, then you, through your thought process, are allowing this to be predatory culture. In our culture, the courts are upholding the rights. These people in these cities who are in office are, are not letting it in. But if you get enough relativism, you might get a city council at some point in time that says, yeah, let them say the prayer. And then you have cities in America that are praying to Satan. And this organization is denying who they are. But look at what they're doing. Look at what they're saying. When Philip... And I taught on this within the last few weeks. Go back into my teaching archives. It's all there. Philip went into the city. He had prayed over it. And there was a high-ranking demonic person in that city that was performing signs and wonders. And everybody was in awe of what that, that demonic force through that man, sorcerer, was doing in that city. And so Philip comes in in the name of Christ and Philip does miracles. But as Philip is doing the miracles, he is healing the sick. He's bringing the answers to the table for what that city needed. That city was in the grip of demonic of a demonic force on stage, giving a show for everybody. But in the meantime, People in that city are full of demonic spirits. Nothing good is happening in that city. I'm going to put that teaching down below in the description box. Go and look at that. That's actually biblical. And you can see what happens. I'm the watchman on the wall. The Bible says when you see danger, when you're the watchman, and when you see danger, you sound the alarm. If you don't sound the alarm, the blood of the people, and sometimes that spiritual blood, the blood of the people is on your hands. If you sound the alarm and they don't listen, the blood is not on your hands. And I'm here to contend, and I'm going to be very straightforward about this. The blood, the spiritual blood will turn to bloodshed in the streets because Satan comes wrapped as an angel of light and he comes to kill, steal and destroy. If you go 
to a Christian pastor and you ask them about their beliefs, they're going to tell you the straight answer. Just like I tell you all the time, come to Jesus Christ, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father, but by him, he died on the cross. Look at my teachings. It is what it is. But when someone has a label and they won't admit to what they are, that's deception. And why would they not admit to it? Why? We need to ask ourselves those questions. We need to understand the answers and we need to have enough biblical knowledge to get it when it's in front of us. This is just a warning for the end times. I will bring you more as they unfold. Demonic forces coming throughout our land, pushing at the door. Will you stand? Will you know the truth? Will you stand in the truth and not blink? These officials in these cities are doing this. We need to pray for the leaders in our cities, don't we? We need to pray for this country and this world, knowing that we are headed in these end times. This last church, the Laodicean church, is neither hot nor cold, and all of this is unfolding under our feet because of this. And I say to the remnant, to the Philadelphian church, to the ones who love the Lord, let's get out on that field. That's what Philip did in that script, description down below. Go read that. Philip walked into that city. He prayed it through, and then he walked in, and he said, you know, that guy, that sorcerer is over there, and he's doing all this stuff, and he didn't say anything else except watch what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will do for you. And the whole city converted, including the dark sorcerer, because these people who were in the darkness, in the demonic religion, in, the, in this demonic world, who are being predators and pushing at this all the doors, all the doors right now. They need Christ more than anyone. And they deserve to have the truth brought to them. And Philip walked into that city boldly. And he said, the truth and the way and the life has arrived through me, through the spirit of Christ in me. Let's get started. And the city was a better place. Let's not lose our cities. Let's not lose our cities. In the Bible, it says, do all that you can. And having done all, stand. That's what we're called to do. Stand in the truth. You can't lose when it's the truth. And if you ever ask somebody if they have a title, and it, that title says what it is, and you ask them, and they deny that title, it's a red flag, just like my shirt. It's red. <laughs> I hope this helps everybody. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.